Just a quick look at the fill stencils guys. They're all settled in nicely now. And just having the uh, feeds. At least two pairs have made themselves up. So we have one of the blondie neck cocks. Paired to this one here. And we have the older of the browns. Paired to this one here. And then we still have the young brown, which is not really mature yet, which may hopefully turn out to be a hen, which I think it is, and pair up with the other blondie neck cock. We'll see how it goes, guys. Okay guys, so I'm pleased to report these two full stencils, or one full stencil and one possible full stencil, and if not, and it's an F2 anyways, um, are both much, much better now. We don't have any struggling to breathe and no rasping sounds, no nothing. They are 100% fixed. So I did come up through midweek when I had to go and get uh, a heart trace monitor fitted. Uh, I popped from the hospital right after that and we came up and they were still struggling so we gave them another half a tablet. So they had two quarter tablets and then they had a full half a tablet each as well. And then the rest was just in the water with the uh, all round antibiotic. And as you can see, we now have two lovely healthy frill stencils. See you later guys. These are all the hens guys, looking a picture of health. A 
There's me uh, number one almond breeder. Nice brown bar hen. We haven't bred off her yet, so we might put her to the barless cockles this year as well as the nice. Get some more brown bar and uh, blue bar. Uh, sorry, brown barless and blue barless. Build the numbers up with those. Nice indigo bar hen here and an indigo hen. I know that looks like a red checker, but it's not. It's an indigo check. And you can see by the uh, purple casting on the head and the tail ribbon, the ribbon tail with a purple rump. Red pigeons don't have a purple rump, they have a cream or white rump. She's an indigo. I've had about six different colours out of this, this out of this hen with her mate. And then we have another little frill stencil hen in here, which we've got on loan to go with the uh, Triganino frill stencils we had purchased in. And the milky check hen. See you later, guys. Those brown check ends are looking really nice. Be nice to get them paired up with the frill stencil crosses. See what I see what turns out. Every time I come round here, we all seem to have mystery sitting out here. Just loves being in the air. Good morning guys and welcome to Alan's allotment. Um, it's the 21st of November 2020 and tomorrow is Mrs C's birthday so we've decided we're going to spend some time with the wife. I think I better had if I know what's good for me. Right, um, yeah we're going to make it a special meal I think. She done it for me for my birthday so it's only uh, right I return the favour. I'm just in the allotment now, uh, in the shed even, having a nice cup of coffee. Um, right, so I brought you along with me this morning while I was uh, feeding the pigeons. Just to give you a little look at them and how uh, smart they're starting to look now that they've got their winter coats. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, next year's breeding. However, I do still need to get rid of quite a number of birds, which, as I say, in the next couple of weeks, I'm probably going to re-photograph the birds, put a bit more information on about each bird, rather than just putting a photograph on and saying it's this. Uh, give a little bit more information about its breed and one thing or another. And uh, see if we can't move a few of those, because about now is normally the time that people will be looking for new birds for breeding for next year and looking for stock birds. Um, ironically around the Christmas time, January time is the time when people do tend to look for new stock. And I have actually uh, bought another two myself. Yeah, I've uh, one of my good friends who I've had birds off in the past uh, when I was doing the colour breeding, Howard, um, I've bought Two birds of him. I've got myself another frill stencil, a uh, white check cock, and uh, I've got another black hen, which is an F1, when that cock was paired to a blue white bar. So, um, just to bring a little bit of extra blood in, so we've got a good variety of frill stencils now that we can use for crossing and uh, without having to keep going back to the parents all the time. We can use F1s from some of the offspring to go to the new blood that came in and we can have a good gene pool. 
um, without having any defects or anything like that guys so that's the intention uh, today I'm not really certain what I'm going to do but I'm probably going to have a go maybe in the polytunnel and do a little bit in the polytunnel guys so we'll uh, we'll see what what happens I'll see how much motivation and energy I've got and then we'll uh, we'll do a little bit and if we do get something done we'll bring you along I'd like to say another massive thank you to all my new recent subscribers and of course all my existing subscribers I really do appreciate all my subscribers and especially the comments in the sections below um, it's nice to feel like you've got that interaction with your viewers if you do enjoy my content please just leave a little comment in the uh, sections below and just say so um, suggestions ideas anything like that are always welcome if you aren't already subscribed to my channel then please do hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon on the right that will alert you every time I put up a new video right guys I'm going to finish this cup of coffee and then we'll see where the day takes us I'll see you later guys right guys it's 10 past 12 now um, and what we've done is we've uh, moved the strawberries over onto this side and put them on the tray and we've clipped all the uh, dead foliage off these or 99.9% .9 of the dead foliage off the strawberries and as you can see they are still fruiting and they're still flowering and they're still producing strawberries uh, this is the first time I've ever had success with strawberries but I think I've got it right now guys uh, but yeah they are still producing I've got our little uh, blueberry and our pink blueberry, uh, the pink lemonade variety. Now that's just the dead foliage we took off the strawberries there, guys. The aubergine never did do anything, it's just dying to death, so we're just going to pull that out eventually. We've moved over the, uh, moved all the uh, peppers, which are still thriving and still alive. Which is good, so we'll have an early start next year with a bit of luck and they will still continue to fruit. And as you can see, we do still have some fruit on them. And they are still producing. So they don't look brilliant, but these pots are holding the moisture quite well because of how damp it is at this time of year now, guys. And um, they haven't really dried back as much as peppers do like it um, and of course it's a lot it, it's cool in here so they're going to be a bit on the droopy side um we've still got some leaks here we never ever did get potted in and whether they ever do go in or not i don't know but what we've done is i've uh, i've raked uh, i've scraped all this bed back and we've mounted it up on here so what i'm going to go and do now and then we've got some new cardboard down just because there was a little bit of weed um, trying to pop through, not much, but a little tiny bit. So we've another dressing of cardboard now, guys. Uh, you've got to remember this all when this is this was all just grass from outside. There was no digging, no nothing. It was just we laid some cardboard down. We put the compost in, as you may remember on some of the older videos. So what I've done is I've uh, scraped all this back, as I say, and we mounted it up. And then I've put some uh, a fresh layer of cardboard down there. And then I've scattered a little bit down just to hold it in place while I go and get some uh, cow manure. And then we're going to put a thin dressing of cow manure in here. And then we're going to put this back onto here. And then likewise, we're going to scrape this back onto here and do the same here, guys. Um, then on this, with this compost here that was reusing, we're going to add some uh, bone meal that we've got in a box down here we have put plenty of bone meal in there not too much of course and then we should be ready for to start planting the onions and garlic in this bed so we'll see how we get on guys and I'll catch you later as you can see guys we have some gold dust in here and I'm sure this is going to uh, help next year's crops in the greenhouse so we're going to get some of this over there and get these in the bottom of the beds and they're going to feed the beds for next year. See you in a minute guys. Hey right, guys, we've just got a nice uh, 
full wheelbarrow full all broken uh, broken up with the fork spread out across this bed now and that's a nice good two inch layer of uh, cow manure in here now um, I have a couple of bags of uh, boat compost as well so I might throw a bag of that on here and spread it just for extra feed then on top of that we'll put a bit of bone meal and then we're going to put this more soil type not so good compost on the surface mainly because when this gets wet out it does stay wet for a bit the new boat dried compost probably will just keep drying out on the surface all the time guys and we don't want that because we've got worms in here um, so I'm going to put the more dense material right on the very top uh, but of course when we plant the onions and the garlic they'll go down through that and they'll put the roots down to the nutrients underneath so uh, we'll crack on and we'll give you a quick look later guys bye Hey guys, so we've got a, a one bag of uh, multi-purpose compost, compost that we bought, tipped out on the top of here now. And we're only put the one bag on there for that stretch. Mainly because I don't, I only have four bags in total. Uh, but two, because of the manure that's underneath there, there's plenty of feed there now for quite a while. There's a good two inch layer of cow manure. So there's plenty of feed there for quite a considerable time plus the feed that's in this and then with the bone meal on top and then that back over there guys we should have a different result altogether next year see you later guys yeah okay, guys so just a bit of a, a quick update so we've got this bed all nicely leveled off now as you can see uh, we've got the cow manure then we've got the uh, bag of fresh compost then we've got a scattering of bone, bone meal and then we've put what was in here originally back on as a top dressing. Um, literally because it is good when you wet this out, it stays damp for a, a period of time. It'll stop it drying out um, and should keep it right. So it'll do for that job. But we know we've got plenty of feed in this bed now, guys. So what I decided I was going to do is I would sacrifice the chilli. As prolific as that's been and... Uh, it's been a really productive plant that it was a grafted chili that was bought in if you remember and what I've decided to do is I wanted to clear this bed down completely um, it was just getting in my road and I couldn't get the bed scraped back as you can see I've started scraping this bed back again ready for to put the next layer of cardboard overlapping on there and then we're going to do the same as you can see this is right up to the uh, top of the bed now I know guys so you can see uh, this bed now is right up to the level and that's the depth that we've basically got at the front. So we're still shallow at the back but we've came right up to the metal bar this time. So we've got at least two inches at the back which is enough for onions to grow guys. Um, so we will get onions across the back and garlic. Um, so yeah, this should be a really really good bed for next year. But because I'm now digging down again and levelling out, I'm using this, uh, I want, to, I want it, it was getting in my road, so I decided to sacrifice it. I haven't threw it away, I've actually repotted it. And uh, I haven't wet it out too much, but obviously I have to wet it to let the compost soak around the roots. It was doing quite well in the dry uh, atmosphere it was having. Uh, and we may set this back and we may lose it, and then again we may not, so... Again, I want to try and keep this one going if we can, but I've cut quite a lot of fruit off this as well, and I've only left it with one or two, perhaps three. Um, and it's, as I said, it's been so prolific. Um, we've got a full plant pot full of uh, chilies here, guys, in various stages of ripening. Um, so they'll just go down home, but at least that's relieved it of uh, a lot of the fruit and should lessen the stress on it. So as you can see I'm starting to fill the uh, barrow back up again with what's down here and that'll just be heaped up on here until we get this dress down and then put that back and uh, then we'll crack on. See you later guys. Right guys as you can see I'm back in the shed and I'm just having yet another cup of coffee. Uh, getting a little bit of a bad head because I've only had the one since I came up. Um, yeah so I'm having this uh, second cup of coffee. And a little uh, five minutes break before I go and get another wheelbarrow full of manure uh, and get this bed finished off and uh, 
and sorted out. And that'll be a good day's work as far as I'm concerned. At least that one bed um, is all done and dusted. Um, I've actually ordered myself uh, an early Christmas present as well. So I decided to treat myself to a new video editing machine. Now the PC that I've got does do it. Um, but it's and the actual putting the uh, video together takes approximately an hour uh, putting all the clips together and the transitions etc but the rendering can take about an hour and when it does do the rendering it maxima uh, it maxes out the uh, CPU in layman's terms that's the brain of the PC so basically it hits a hundred percent and it's just flatlined at a hundred percent which means it's struggling um, and although it's done a good job so far it's time to have something a little bit better and uh, so I've ordered myself a new PC it has two brains in it and it's got 12 cores uh, so in, in essence it's like 12 brains um, in layman's terms uh, along with 64 gigabytes of memory whereas the current machine only has 20 gigabytes so I'll give you an idea it's also a professional workstation as well, so it's designed for doing um, like AutoCAD and SolidWorks types uh, uh, applications which consume lots and lots of memory and lots and lots of CPU, which is the brain. So it should be able to handle that uh, quite nicely, and it's also being kitted out with uh, SSD drives, which are a faster hard disk drive, which is where you st store your data, for those that don't know. Um, so it should be pretty much lightning. It's also got a, an enhanced graphics card which my current machine doesn't have and that will help with the actual transitions and speed those processes up as well. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That should be here next week. So it's an early Christmas box and Merry Christmas to me. Um, right, I'm going to crack on and get this uh, bed finished off as I said earlier guys. Uh, I'm really delighted that the frill stencils have pulled through and uh, they're looking a million dollars now. I've actually taken the little Coleman out of there now and I've put it back in the other side, it's it's fine. We've put it back through there and we just left the two fill stencils on their own. Um, so they should be fine guys. Getting a little bit tired and flagging a little bit now, but so I really want to yeah, get over and get that last bar of manure in there and get this bed finished off. And if I've got time and enough daylight, because it's 2.30 now, but it's, it's, the light is coming down fast. Uh, we might even plant the garlic and onions or we might just leave that till tomorrow and just, it's only a case of popping them in whilst I'm up feeding the birds before I go back home and uh, make Mrs C's uh, birthday lunch right um, yeah so basically that's what I'm going to do just have this cup of coffee and crack on I'll catch you later guys right guys once again the daylight's getting the better of us and you'll see uh, all the shells. So what I've got done is I've got the garlic planted now. So uh, right up to here, where you can see these green uh, markers. So it's almost half this bed is planted out with one, two, three, four, five, six in rows. And I've planted them all pretty close proximity, guys. Um, as you'll probably see, they're still approximately four to five inches apart and likewise in this distance here as well. And I've still managed to get six, so six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, forty-eight, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. Yeah, so we've got quite a lot of garlic in there guys, so... As I said, I don't need them to be gigantic. I just want nice sized garlic. Um, and it's well past when they should have been in. As you can see, some of them have actually started to sprout. The ones that are bought in the uh, in the packets, you can see one or two of them had actually started to sprout. So they, they were long overdue getting in, guys. But there we go. Things happen, things get in the way, and uh, we're a little bit late. But... At least I can have this entire bed now with the garlic and the onions. Um, as I say, we had way too much last year. And when these are ready, they can come out and we can get something else in there. So we've still got some onions to go uh, and planting, guys. 
So the uh, garlic is Casablanca. And then I've managed to find these in Wilco's. And as I say, I've had these oh, a couple of weeks now. I just haven't got them in. And this is a good old mixture of uh, 50 onions. And there's whites and reds and uh, yellows in there. Um, a fair old mixture. I've never grew red onions before, but I, I know a lot of people don't have a great deal of success with them. Um, not sure why, but we're going to give them a whirl. We'll plant them and see what happens, guys. I personally don't like red onion. Um, but there we go other people in the house do so as you can see we now got the bed finished off completely and all leveled out got the cow manure in there and then we got the uh, bag of new compost on top then we put the bone meal down and then we've finished off with the mound that we had up here and we've leveled all this out so as you can see that's a really productive day We've got all this bed sorted out and we've got at least a good half of it with garlic and hopefully there's enough room there to get the 50 onions or so in there as well. Um, so yeah, that'll give them a good start. I'm going to also plant some more onions over in the growing area in that bed up against the fence once I get some more uh, good quality compost to go over the top of that cow manure. It's probably going to take 10 or 12 bags and then we'll let that settle down for a week or so and then we'll get some more onions over in there. Although the fact I've got all this lot set, or getting all this lot set off or will have by tomorrow, um, there's no massive rush. We can have these in here and at least they're not going to get waterlogged in here. Touch wood. As long as the polytunnel stays in one piece, guys. Right, I'll give you a quick catch up in the shed. And that's me for today. You can see the daylight's fast, fast fading on me now. Right guys, we're in the shed again. And as you can see, the daylight's fading fast. So I'll try and get this recorded before it uh, disappears on me altogether. Uh, right, okay, so we've had a productive day today. We've managed to get that bed finished. And all the cow menu wheelbarrow over here. And get that bed leveled out. And that's all done, ready for next year. We've even went a step further. And we've got half of that bed planted out with garlic. So I'm a happy chappy. It's a productive day. I didn't think I was going to get that much done today. Thought if I got half of the bed done and that was it. But we carried on plodding on and uh, hey presto. So we've got about 50 something garlic in there. Um, that'll that'll do me. As I say, I don't need them to be gigantic. I just want some garlic. Uh, we had no success at all last year. As you know, it was a complete failure. And I haven't planted them down so deep this time. I've literally just put them under the surface. Uh, we've stuck six, uh, six litres of water on um, and watered them in. And we'll just leave them to their own devices now, guys, and see how it turns out. Tomorrow we'll pop up, we'll get the pigeons fed and watered, and we'll possibly pop in those 30 onions, uh, 50 onions or whatever there is, get those planted out, and then we'll be making our way down home, uh, ready for to do Mrs C's birthday dinner. Right, guys, uh, so there won't be any videos for Sunday. So, um, for now, stay safe, be practical, and keep yourselves out of harm's way. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribed to my channel even, please do hit the subscribe button, then the little bell icon on the right, and that'll alert you every time I put up a new video. Stay safe, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.